Hi everyone! We are in September 2021 and since last April, EPOS has been evolving a lot. Plus, during this summer, EPOS has been tested by numerous beta testers who gave us great feedback to improve it. I would like to thank especially Larson, Christophe and Kevin from the Team Titan. These three people have been so far the most active beta testers and it's been a true pleasure to work with them. By the way, if you are interested in their art and workflow, they will do an online tech talk at Ottawa International Animation Film Festival on the 28th of September at 7pm EDT. You will find the link in the description. So, what's new with EPOS? The interface has been improved to display more information directly on short and bold sequences when you hover the mouse above them. For instance, when you create a new shot sequence, a message will remind you to configure your camera settings before adding it. Other icons are also there, such as an icon to detach the plane from the camera, which can be really useful, especially when you need the camera to move around a plane. You can switch off and on the pilot mode here. You can configure and add several planes in a shot. Don't be surprised if you can only change the height, it's because the width will automatically adapt depending on your camera ratio. Having several planes can be really useful, especially when you draw several characters and need to move them separately. You can add short and bold sequences before and after the current sequence. This new sequence will either have the same duration in frames as the current sequence or have a customized duration to be longer or shorter. Plus, you can also add drawings at the cursor position in the sequencer. Drawings are a kind of keyframes to split the action of your characters in a plane. So, contrary to the video of April, where it was necessary to create a new shot sequence for each drawing, here it is possible to make all drawings within the same shot and plane. This comes to be really useful, especially when you need to describe the action of your character, or when you need to draw two different or three different characters doing their own actions on different planes. You've got many new layout options. In April, to change the color of the background or the grid, it was necessary to edit a material instance, which was not either friendly for storyboard artists who just want to focus on the story and the frame and not on silly technical stuff, right? So now, the background, the grid type and its color can be changed thanks to a simple interface in EPOS. In addition, you can also change the color of chart and board sequences it is plain that, in the future, you can also assign custom colors for each shot in order to easily sort them. You would like to share your storyboard as a video or an image sequence? You can use the option Render Movie when selecting one or several EPOS sequences. A level sequence will be then created, which will give you the option to either use the panel Render Movie or the plugin Movie Render Queue. Even if it's not displayed in the track list yet, EPOS lets you use a skeletal mesh in its sequencer. Once the skeletal mesh has been added to your level, you have the possibility to drag and drop it into your shot sequence, then use the animation of your choice to use it as a reference and draw above it. Thanks to the great job done by Mike and all beta testers, EPOS has been evolving a lot for the past few months and it's still going on. There are many features we would like to add, such as the ability to easily import video sequences, improving the naming convention or adding an onion skin. To do so, we are still eager to find beta testers willing to vote for features, spend a little of their time to try EPOS and send us feedback. 
The program has been extended until December 31st, 2021. So if you're interested, please apply on Praxinos' website and tell us how motivated you are. Thank you very much. Take care and see you soon. Bye.